Good morning, everybody. We are going to start our meditation uh, on loving friendliness. I believe you all have papers in front of you. Please take the papers and uh, recite that Metta Sutta Living Friendliness section all together with me. May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere. Neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate this mountain. This is unobstructed without hate or resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down or in the awake, one should this mindfulness. This is called divinely doing here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision, removing desire for sensual pleasures. One comes never again to birth in the womb. Now, friends, with this metta thought in mind, let us practice meditation for a few minutes before we start our talk. In our meditation system, whatever topic we take to focus our mind on. We start with focusing mind on the breathing. So you sit in comfortable posture and pay total undivided mindful attention to your breathing and breathe normally without verbalizing or conceptualizing or holding breath, just paying attention, breathe in and breathe out. I don't have to repeat the word, breathe in and breathe out. You do it naturally anyway. So while breathing in, Focus your mind on that breath. Notice inhaling as inhaling, exhaling as exhaling. Then you notice the breath is changing as you breathe in and and breathe out. The breath that you start breathing in is moving, changing, and filling your lungs. As you breathe out, the breath started coming out is changing and changing and finally disappearing. Once disappeared, you never know where it went. Next breath, and the next breath, the next breath. This is a repetition you experience over and over again. Along with that, you feel the breath. 
there is no other way to know the breath without feeling. You feel the breath. And you mentally perceive the breath. That perception also changes as you breathe in and out. Although you have been breathing all your life from the moment you were born, most of the time we don't pay attention to the breath. Here we breathe with attention, mindfulness. And that attention also changes from moment to moment. Your consciousness is changing faster than anything you can imagine in the world. So what I mentioned is that you experience the changes of your breathing, that's we call body, breath body, that belongs to body aggregate, physical aggregate, Rupa in Pali. And you notice feeling that belongs to feeling aggregate, Vedana Khanda in Pali. You experience perception that, is, that belongs to perception aggregate. Sanya Khanda, you experience attention that belongs to Sankara Khanda, you experience consciousness that belongs to Vijnana Khanda, aggregate of consciousness. What you experience in, in one inhaling and one exhaling are the changes of your form, feelings, perceptions, volition, and consciousness. They are so subtle, you cannot identify them, you cannot isolate them, they happen so quickly all together. All you can do is paying attention, whatever it may be, form, feeling, perceptions, pollution, or consciousness, whichever is prominent, pay attention to it. And notice that it doesn't stay the same for even two, two consecutive moments changing. Since there is nothing to excite, because the repetition is taking place all the time, the mind naturally slows down, becomes calm, relax, peaceful. The breath becomes calm, relaxed, and peaceful. Body becomes calm, relaxed, and peaceful. At that moment, no greed, no desire can arise. When the mind is calm, relaxed, and peaceful, greed cannot arise there. As soon as greed arises, excitement, agitation, distress arises. In the state where everything is calm, relaxed, and peaceful, 
greed does not arise. Along with that, you experience the feeling of metta. In the relaxed state of mind, everything is so calm, no place for resentment at that time. So resentment or anger fades away. When it happens, your mind and body feelings become even more calm, relaxed and peaceful. Perhaps at that time, you might experience sluggishness, sleepiness, drowsiness. When everything is calm, sleepiness sneaks into your mind, which is very sweet. You unconsciously welcome sleepiness. But this is not the time to welcome sleepiness. We want to overcome that. In order to defeat sleepiness, visualize very bright light in your mind. Visualize or open your eyes or take a deep breath and hold it as long as you can and repeat this several times until your body warms up, sleepiness fades away. Once it is, you, you make effort to overcome your sleepiness by doing, by visualizing light, opening your eyes, taking deep breath and holding it, sleepiness fades away, then you may have excessive energy. And you will be more restless. And restlessness and worry is another problem. Now you have to overcome that. When restlessness and worry arises, there at the background is something to cause sleepiness, so cause agitation, restlessness and so forth. Either your mind goes to the past and remember things you have done incorrectly, incompletely, that might agitate your mind, disturb your mind. Or you might be planning the future. So the mind vacillates between the past and the future, does not stay in the present moment. Therefore, try to keep the mind focused on your breath very diligently. Keep the mind focused on the breath. Then gradually the past disappears, the future disappears, mind stays on your breath. In the present moment, present moment is not empty moment. In the present moment you experience the breath going in and out. Then still you may have doubt about your success. Friends, that is one of the hindrances sometimes bothers people 
when we come to meditation. At that time, very honestly, sincerely have deep faith in the Buddha, who introduced this system from his own personal experience, practicing himself for countless times, achieved his goal and declared it to the world. Buddha himself followed the Dhamma. His Dhamma is his guide as well as our guide. So we must have trust in the Buddha and Dhamma. Also a community of noble disciples of the Buddha followed the Buddha, followed the Dhamma, and attained supreme enlightened state. We are following the same path. We too can achieve it. Buddha guaranteed that. Buddha guaranteed if we followed the path he showed us, we too can attain that state. So we must have this confidence in us Moreover, we also have achieved something during this short period that you have overcome your yes, greed, resentment, sleepiness and drowsiness, restlessness and worry. These are called hindrances. And what remains is only doubt. We can overcome that too. Once they are out of our way, we become full of joy. Surely we will be full of joy. Of course, we have to achieve this to get this joy. Although I mention all these things quickly, but this is the way to gain joy, experience joy. And joy you cannot artificially create in your mind. It develops very naturally depending on what we are doing. Joy makes the body and mind even more relaxed. This joy is not agitation or some kind of titillation. It is calming and soothing state of mind. When that joy arises, body and mind becomes even more calm, relaxed, tranquil, that leads to happiness. Happy person gains concentration. Buddha repeated it many, many times. So the system is very pristine, pure, and crystal clear. So we have to follow that. Then we gain concentration. Use that concentration to see even more deeply and clearly form, feeling, perception, thought, and consciousness. Then you will see deepest level of change, impermanence, things rising and falling, at an inconceivable rapidity. That way our greed, hatred and delusion vanish forever. With this little very important instructions, 
I repeat this over and over and over. No variations in these instructions because these are the instructions that the Buddha has given us. Buddha's explanation never changes because it is very clearly personal experience, Buddha expressed it. It can never change. The system is there. So we stay a little longer in meditation. And then I, start, I ring the bell and we start the talk.
Okay, friends. Uh, the theme of this meditation <coughs> is uh, metta. Everybody knows the theme. We just recited metta recital, we recite this sutta every day at our place. And we encourage people to recite it. This discourse is recited in many places on numerous occasions in Buddhist countries, especially in Theravada countries. It is recited in Pali language. Most of the people who recite Pali stanzas, discourses, don't know the meaning. <laughs> they like to recite. They like to hear the sound. Like music. Pali language is like the music. And they like to hear that musical sound of Pali language and completely ignore the meaning. They think if they listen to the discourses, they get protection. This discourse actually is a discourse which we must recite to not only recite but practice to get blessings. The title of this discourse in Pali Metta. Karaniya Metta. Karaniya means to be done. What is to be done? Metta. Metta, loving friendliness popularly known as loving kindness. I don't like the loving kindness word because uh, in the four Brahma Vihara, four sublime states, boundless states, four, metta, karuna, mudita, upekha. Metta is, uh, is coming from the root, mitta. Mitta means friend. Metta means friend. Friend's nature is called metta. Friend's nature is called metta. Next is karuna. Karuna is compassion. If you say loving kindness, you repeat kindness twice for compassion. Another word for compassion is kindness. So you say loving kindness for metta and for karuna you call compassion. So you repeat the same word for both Pali words. That is not in my view not correct. So I like to call it loving kindness, loving friendliness rather than loving uh, kindness, loving friendliness. So Buddha said loving friendliness is to be done, not to be recited. <laughs> How many times you recite friendliness? It doesn't make any sense to your life, doesn't bring any meaning. Friendliness is something that we should have in practice, right? Friendliness is something we do in practice. And therefore the discourse name is Karaniya. The discourse 
to be done instruction in the discourse are to be to put into practice that is why it is called karaniya method so even to practice metta we have to be qualified <laughs> we have to be qualified there are 14 qualifications mentioned in the discourse itself although people have overlooked it if you look at this discourse very carefully you can see these qualities there 14 qualities if you see the complete discourse you see one skill in good wishing to attain that state of peace should act thus here one has to be skill a skill in doing good if you are not skillful in doing good in the name of good we may do not do good we may do something with ulterior motive and therefore one who does good and that per- person must be skill skillful in doing good that is one quality at the same times there must be an intention a wish real intention when we practice metta there must be an intention wholesome intention not any you know intention is some kind of ulterior motive selfish intention is that be selfless intention what is that intention intention is to attain peace intention to attain peace this is not negotiated peace between two countries and two no, two organizations <laughs> this is unconditional peace so in order to attain unconditional peace one has to be skillful two qualities and then and one should be able one should be able that means one should be very clear in that person's mind one should be very clear and uh, intention must be very pure you have to have a special ability to train the mind to be clear pure when you practice metta and then straight we have to be straight no pretentive what you call uh, pretending not pretending no any pretext we don't do it just to show off we must be 100% honest to ourselves sincere and we do not practice metta if you practice if you do this to me i will practice metta or you cannot say i practice metta to everybody but such and such a guy you cannot say that it has to be universal unconditional without expecting anything in return that is why we have to be very straight <laughs> this is greatness is 100% honesty then we must be upright the 
the third quality, the, or rather, uh, uh, fourth quality, upright, straight, upright, straightforward, as opposed to crooked or hypocritical. These are all 100% personal. Metta practice is 100% personal. Sometimes people have uh, hesitation to practice metta because when they practice metta, they think other people say that you are sissy. You are cowardly. You are weak. Therefore, they have some hesitation to practice metta. Friends, you practice metta and you will benefit. No matter what other people tell you, you practice it. And therefore, you must be very straight, upright, sincere, honest, when you practice metta. Then the sixth quality is obedience. You may say you may be obedient to your parents, obedient to your teachers, but there is a deep meaning in that. Obedient means Obedient to the Dhamma. One who is obedient to the Dhamma is easy to correct. When you are not easy to correct, you cannot practice metta. So you have to have that kind of flexibility, that kind of uh, uh, state of mind to adjust, accommodate, criticism, accept instructions, advice, and no evil wishes. One has to have, uh, and also one does not loud himself or, or not disparaging others, praising oneself, being proud of oneself and disparaging others. If you disparage others, you cannot practice metta because in, in, in the mind there is uh, dark spot of anger, criticism. Then one should not be angry. When one is advised, one should accept the advice in a friendly way. So when you practice metta, this is how we, we will be, we become obedient, accepting advices <clears throat> and then not getting angry and don't have angry wishes. And also, you should be uh, reproved and does not resist any advice or when you are reproved, don't try to criticize the reprover. You say somebody is advising you, then you said, well, you advise me, but how about you? You have so much problems within yourself and you are advising me. Without that kind of uh, reprover, uh, Reproving the reprover, one should be able to accept 
advisors and one should be uh, very open mind open has to have open mind when you are given advice according to dhamma since you have respect for the dhamma and your intention is to develop metta then with that intention accept the advice and one should not be contemptuous when somebody advises you don't develop any contempt towards the person this person is always advising me the advice is given to you out of compassion out of metta and uh, you should not you should be should not be deceitful in the discourse itself it is mentioned and uh, these are the qualities that requires one to be obedient to practice metta that means we have to we have to have a very flexible open sincere relaxed friendly mind to practice metta then one should be soft mudu uh our mind must be like very uh, sort of like uh, waxing like wax rubber or clay that can mold to anything we to make any object so uh we must be humble anatimani anatimani pali word and then uh content you know one is not content discontent demanding this and that that person is creating stress on the society cannot practice metta that means we must be gentle then easy to support subharo pali word subharo easy to support you know this car is called subaru easy to support is to maintain we have to have an attitude that helps us to make our life simple and few duties you see when we have too many things too many activities we are full of stress no time to practice metta you are always agitated excited doing this doing that always busy how can you practice metta because the mind is so agitated excited nervous uh, you need some rest and relax state of mind to practice metta the discourse itself says and uh then we have to be sallahu ka utti sallahu ka utti means light living lahu ka means light sallahu ka means light living if we are very luxurious 
our mind is scattered here and there for acquiring so many things, increase our, our greed, that makes our life even more miserable, unhappy, cannot practice metta. Then, controlling senses. Santu Sako. Control our senses. If our senses always are agitated, excited, all from all the sensory stimuli, mind is not at rest to practice metta. Then we have to be discreet, modest in order to practice metta. Then a polite, modest, not impudent, appa gabbo. These are the words in the discourse. Appagabbo, before we practice metta, these are the qualities that we have to cultivate within ourselves. Then we have to, this is another important thing, but not too, too many people can practice. Unattached to families, kulesu ananugiddo, unattached to families. Friends, don't take offense. When we are attached to anything, metta practice is not easy. Why is that? In metta practice, uh, it is instructed, if you start practicing metta towards the opposite sex, opposite gender, you cannot practice metta. If you practice metta towards your loved ones, then you limit your metta practice. So we have to we have to have a very balanced state of mind to practice metta. Dear ones or desire is called near enemy of metta. Desire is near enemy because it uh, camouflage as metta. Desire disguises as metta. Adversary is far enemy of metta. Why it is called far enemy? Because you can see the enemy coming towards you. Inner enemy is hidden within yourself like a friend. Inner, inner enemy is disguised, camouflaged to deceive you. And you think I practice metta towards my wife, towards my daughter, towards my son, towards my father, towards my mother. If you make that kind of discriminations, you cannot practice metta. Metta practice is a universal. This is called boundless practice. Appamanya. It is called appamanya in Pali, boundless. You have to remove all boundaries, demarcations to practice metta. Only then can it become universal practice. And uh, uh, unattached to families, I'm taking this from the discourse itself. And Kule uh, Swanagiddu, then uh, 
नाटे कुर्दन समाचरे किंचि not doing slight wrong thing which wise senses because if you do any little wrong thing then that would make you feel guilty and you will be embarrassed at that time your mind is not very clear and therefore practicing metta becomes weak so buddha asks us not to do something wrong which will be censored criticized by the wise and also there are four other qualities in in addition to this 14 at the beginning at the end, the end of the discourse there are four other marvelous qualities they are rather benefit what are they not falling into erroneous views i i tomorrow's talk will be on that erroneous views but i want to mention it today just as an outline when you practice metta uh, people who don't understand pali don't understand the deep meaning of metta don't understand how it affect us don't understand the benefit correctly plus they have superstitious beliefs lot of superstitious beliefs around metta practice this is especially in uh, buddhist countries uh, who practice metta and it is very difficult to uh, bring them to the right path of metta practice and therefore the practice will not become very powerful it is a very powerful practice therefore <coughs> this course itself says not falling into erroneous views <laughs> buddha himself mentioned in the discourse dittincha anupagama dittincha anupagama don't fall into erroneous views next is virtuous and end out with vision we have to be when we practice practice metta we have to this quality if we don't have this quality when we practice metta we have this quality if you are not virtuous when you practice metta we become virtuous of course you cannot wait until you perfect all these qualities to practice metta you have to practice metta as you are whatever state of mind you have with that state of mind you have to practice start the practice when you keep practicing you gain these qualities you acquire these qualities you end up you will be end out with these qualities so on the one hand when we practice metta we naturally glide into the state of mind where all these qualities begin to develop when you are when you have all these qualities with these qualities as the background if you practice metta then it will be very wonderful practice meaningful practice then last thing will happen is the wonderful thing one comes never again to birth in the womb removing desire for sensual pleasures removing desire for sensual pleasures kameshu vinaya gedham nahi jatu gabbase yang punar punar that is when you practice metta 
it becomes so effective, so powerful, all your desires will vanish from your mind. That is why this is called mindfulness. Etang satin aditya. Practice this mindfulness. What mindfulness? Mindfulness of pure practice of metta to get rid of our desire. Because desire is a near enemy. Desire is the enemy that has disguised in the name of metta. We have to get rid of that. And then one comes never again to birth in the womb. Because the desire is the one that brings, that, that repeats our birth again and again. Pono bhavika nandira sagata tatra tatra binandini. Yayam tanna pono bhavika nandira sagata tatra tatra binandini. This very same greed is leading to delight here, delight there. Delight here, delight there means bringing suffering here, bringing suffering there. Any delight, don't be very pessimistic when I say this, any delight, yo sukhaṁ abhinandhi so dukhaṁ abhinandhi, Buddha said. Yo sukhaṁ abhinandhi so dukhaṁ abhinandhi. One who enjoys pleasure, enjoys pain. That is why I say you buy one, get one free. You work very hard to enjoy pleasure. Along with pleasure, you have pain. You cannot say, I, I, I need only pleasure and I don't need any pain. No. You have to buy the whole package. That is the deal. And therefore, as long as we have a desire, we must expect pain, suffering. Metta practice is such a wonderful thing that even it superficially doesn't look like mindfulness practice. But it is called etang sating aditya. This mindfulness should be developed. Now, I spoke about the qualities and uh, some aspect of how to practice it. Now I must tell you the background story. <clears throat> that is also <laughs> very interesting, background story. I think most people know that. You find in uh, Sutta Nipata, uh, Sutta Nipata commentary. One day during, um, you know, Theravada Buddhist monks have three months retreat. We call Vassa. Three months retreat. Uh, some people have six months, three months in uh, winter, three months in rain. I think three months in winter is very good for these countries. You go so cold, snow and so forth, then we go here and there. Other three months is good for countries like India. Anyway, these monks wanted to observe three months rainy season. We call it Vassa. They went to the Buddha and uh, Buddha gave instruction to these monks to go and practice during this rainy season. During the rainy season, uh, monks must stay in one place and practice meditation. These monks went to a remote village, a sort of forest area. Uh, nearby there was a village also, so that they could get food. 
when they went to the forest the people in the village cleared certain areas built little kutis little huts for all these monks to stay 60 of them and uh, <coughs> they stayed there then what happened in the forest there were deities at first they welcomed these monks because they were so holy so noble and with pure heart they are going to practice meditation they stayed one day these deities did not know that they came to stay there for three months when they stayed there one day they thought tomorrow they will go back because it is very although they loved them respected them but it is inconvenient to them you know here a group of monks practicing meditation here group of deities enjoying sensual pleasures these two things cannot go together so those deities enjoying pleasure welcome these monks oh wonderful very holy noble ones and so forth. only for a short period and hope tomorrow they will go away so that we can continue our pleasure next day they went on arms round and returned to the forest they say boy they came back again neman they will go tomorrow third day also they did not go so they this got their first respect turn into contempt familiarity breeds contempt so they became unhappy so what they did was they created all kind of sounds frightening sounds at night in the dark some of the monks could not sleep could not meditate headache stomach ache and so forth and still next day they went on arms round and came back and started meditating then this deity told he this even this doesn't work let us do something else they then created various type of uh, corpses dead bodies here and there and these monks began to have a very awful smell you know bombarding their brain going to shatter their head the smell is so bad and they saw this dead body then they all in few days became very pale looked very sickly they all went to the buddha buddha said monks when you go for certain place to may spend 3 months you are not supposed to leave that place why did you come back they said when the buddha we cannot meditate there this is the problem ah oh, is it the problem okay give us another place name us another place for us to go would they say no no you must go to the same place you must go to the same place buddha so they are return to the same place benefit not only them even those deities so protested they are being there will be benefited for the benefit of these monks as well as the deities buddha said no you must go to the same place monks did not know that did not know buddha's intention they said when the buddha said they protested when the buddha said we cannot go is very day no 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 you must go there first time you went there without a weapon this time go with a weapon what kind of weapon take metta 
take metta as a weapon and go there and twice a day before you enter the forest in the morning you practice four kind of protections meditation protective meditation they are called uh, arakka chaturarakka buddha anusati metta asuba marada buddha anusati reflecting the qualities of the buddha in there there is a discourse called dhajagga sutta <coughs> where buddha said when you have fear think of the qualities of the buddha think of the qualities of the buddha friends i am telling you very honestly and sincerely if we know all the noble wonderful marvelous of inspiring qualities of the buddha you really will have such a trust and confidence whatever fear you have in any place that will that fear will completely vanish from your mind only thinking of the qualities of the buddha so buddha said this is one practice reflections there are 10 reflections or anusrati this are four buddha said when you go there practice this four meditation what is one is reflect in the qualities of the buddha buddha anusrati then reflect in the the nature of death uh, buddha anusrati no then metta metta meditation then reflecting impurities of the body asuba asuba meditation all this can be misinterpreted misunderstood and sometimes can lead to dangers if you don't understand them properly even metta if you do not understand correctly we can get into all kind of uh, mystic confused uh, beliefs so buddha said practice qualities of the buddha as meditation then uh, metta meditation then impurities of the body lastly practice meditation on death they don't sound very pleasant but they don't sound very pleasant because we don't understand understand the deep meaning of them when we understand deep meaning of them none of these objects these subjects be unpleasant or pessimistic every subject buddha recommended us to practice used for meditation has a deep meaning and with the deep understanding the deep meaning we must practice metta is a very wholesome practice but if we misunderstand it then that, that can become uh sometimes uh, uh, superstitious so anyway buddha said practice this in the morning this four kind of meditation and in the evening you practice this and go to the forest they went there very first day these deities began to feel very relaxed these monks practice metta deities began to feel relaxed so every day they practice these four kind of meditation and these deities gradually slowly began to increase their respect for these monks and they cleared up the whole area made their living very comfortable happy peaceful they all practice meditation all of them attain full enlightenment 
all the deities learn to meditate and they become uh, extreme endurers buddha saw all this and said go to the same place and practice meditation and therefore when you practice metta meditation in real sense it brings benefit not only to the one who practices it but also people around them will be benefited there's a very beautiful discourse <coughs> uh, in madhyamini gaya three months anuruddha nandiya and badhya three months practice put the metta into real practice it is so powerful when they when buddha asked how they practice it they explained it when they explained it the step they followed so buddha said sadu sadu 18 times buddha said to them sadu sadu excellent excellent 18 times is called chula gosinga sutta in madhyamini kai chula gosinga sutta and not only that all the deities earth bound deities sky bound deities up to brahma realms everybody was delighted everyone to see the way they practice metta friends my time is up you heard the bell gong and i continue my talk tomorrow the rest of the talk uh, also very important and very interesting and i wish you continue practice in metta read the discourse in english since you don't know pali read it read it very 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 slowly trying to understand the meaning of each word don't read like the reading newspaper mm-hmm. or a magazine read these discourses since it is good, translated into good english read it and think of every word and you will see how to practice and be benefited thank you see you at lunch time
Thank you. 